Hello, welcome to Check It Out with Rich. Uh, a couple videos ago, I did a review of the Halo View BT11. Um, it was a nice camera. Uh, I liked it because uh, you put the ca uh, camera on the rear view mirror, so that opened up your dash. But the main thing I didn't like about it was I lost my side views. Uh, on the system I have now, the RD7, I have the rear view camera, I have two side view cameras, and I also have a camera up front pointing forward. So Halo View, to their credit, sent me the BT6. Um, this has the side view cameras, it has the rear view camera, camera, and it also, they sent me an extra one for up front. So we're going to do a quick uh, what's in the box here, and then I'm not going to do a complete uh, camera install on it. I will do an install on the side view because they have a marker and they're different than the other ones. But if you want to look to see how to hook the cameras up or uh, install them, I'll put links in the description of my of my other videos. All right, let's see what we got in the box here. Okay, and again, this is the BT6, and it is a touchscreen. I really like that. That was one of my biggest complaints with the RD7. You had to do the buttons and scroll, and it, it was just a pain in the butt. Okay, you have a user manual for the cameras itself and a user manual for the um, monitor. You have some uh, cleaning cloth and some wipes. And you have an adhesive. Let's get this out of here. You have an adhesive mount for the monitor itself. And you also have a suction cup. Uh, mount and then coming over here that's it now the B the BT7 I think is like a seven inch screen this is like a five and a half inch screen I was a little worried that it might be too small uh, maybe I should have asked if they'd send a BT7 instead of the BT6 but I hooked this up with just a camera on my dash and it's not that bad it's not bad at all I, I was actually really surprised Okay, now you have the camera itself, and it is the same as what's in the uh, BT-11. And on here, let's see if we can see that. Yes, there's a little button here, and that is for pairing your camera with the monitor. Okay, we have a back plate for the uh, camera. And there is a rubber gasket. And you have a power supply, and this will plug into your cigarette lighter, and there is an on and off button. You have three antennas. One goes to the camera, the other two go to the monitor. Uh, this is a patch cable to hook up to Furion. This is a pairing cable where you would hook uh, one to your power lead. And then the other one to your monitor and your camera. And this is, looks like a power supply that you can hook up to uh, wires, which this is what we'll be using. And then this is another function I like about this camera. You can either use the cigarette lighter or you can go and use a USB-C connection. Well, you really zoomed in on that one, Beck. <laughs> yeah, and this is real nice. Um, you know, this is going to take up your cigarette lighter, so you have no other option to plug anything else in. At least with this, you can put a uh, dual port, with, whether it's a USB-A or USB-C, into your cigarette lighter, and that'll give you two things you can hook up. So this is how we're going to hook it up, I believe. All right, let's get this out of the way, and we'll get something else down here. Okay, the next thing in the box is your uh, antenna and, um, extension. I am going to be putting this on. Um, I didn't on the BT-6. It cut out, I think, like three times maybe. But this is definitely going on. I don't want it cutting out again. And it also came with uh, some cable management. Uh, whatever. Do hickeys. Okay, next. Okay, this is. Okay, you have a 
cleaning pads, you have your manual for the camera, and then you have another camera. And this is model number BTC128. And it's the same as the other one. You have your pairing button underneath, antenna goes here. And it comes with the same thing with the back plate, the antenna, and your uh, power cable. It also comes with some uh, mounting screws and some crimp wire connectors. So is this going to be the one you put on the top of the camper facing forward? Yes, correct. Okay, and then next we have the uh, side view cameras, which are also, uh, they have uh, your marker lights there. And then in here you have your user ma manual. And then here is your side marker with the camera. Let me put that up. This, this does pivot, so you can come out a pretty good ways. Okay, and like the other two cameras, this is the same. It has a pairing button here. You have two pair of wires in the back. I have it tape shot. I was uh, seeing how it would fit. And um, one pair of wires will go hook up to your uh, running lights, and the other one is your power for the camera. I'm hooking it up separately. A lot of people will just hook this up to their running lights, and then you have to turn your lights on in order for the camera to work. I have a switch in here that operates the cameras, so I'm gonna hook them up differently. I can turn my uh, parking lights on or I can leave them off and the camera's gonna work as long as my switch is on. Okay, the other thing is, I was looking at their website the other day and they have vertical ones of these. I guess the light is this way which would I wish I would have seen that before they sent this to me. I would have asked if they could have sent those because where mine is at, I'm going to have, have some holes showing. So I'm thinking with those other ones, they may have covered those holes up. I may have been able to use the same holes. I, I, I don't know. But I think that would have worked a little bit better than this. But this is still going to work perfectly fine. I don't have an issue with this. Just I'm going to have one hole showing that I'm just going to put a screw into and leave it the way it is. Okay. You also have another camera and an antenna for each camera. And these cameras do, these antennas do pivot 90 degrees. Okay, you also have some uh, mounting screws. Now these are self tappers. I'm not going to use these screws. We have Asdell siding and I don't want to use self tappers. I'm going to use regular screws and I'm going to pre-drill. And then you also get some uh, crimp wire connectors. Okay, it also comes with this little connector. And what you do with this is you plug this into your pairing cable. And then you take your wires from your camera and put them in here. There's little uh, push connects. And then you're able to pair your camera while it's right there with your monitor. I'm going to hook everything up. Um, when I hooked up the monitor, the camera that was with the monitor in the truck, it was already paired. So I don't know if these, since they're in individual boxes, if they're going to be paired or not, but we'll find out. But I won't pair them until I get them all on a truck. But you can use this to help pair them. Okay, so that's it. Um, I will go over more detail on the monitor. Um, I don't think I'll have to go over too much on the cameras, but I am going to get some deep, some footage of me installing the side markers just because I'm doing it differently. And like I said, if you want to see how to install the cameras, uh, I'll put links in the description. All right, so let's get this thing installed. Okay, and just like that, we're in uh, Big Run State Park in Maryland. Uh, it's beautiful here. There's no hookups. We're trying out the solar. And I already uh, installed the camera on the other side, so I'm going to do this side. Uh, hopefully, Becky doesn't watch this because it's going to get messy. Okay, um, first thing you want to do here is take this plastic cover off. So there is a little notch right here. Don't try these ones. 
There's a little notch right here, and it doesn't take much. It just pops right off. Another thing I did, there are two screws in the back. I tightened them down just in case. So what I'm going to do is, this is where my uh, camera was. And this is a little bit longer because it has the marker. So I'm going to have to draw this hole back so I can get the wires in. Now, Becky is not going to watch this. Are you, Beck? Nope. You're going to close your eyes, aren't you? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, one of the things I don't like about this, that's all the wiring you get. Yes, me, they should give at least 12, if not 20 inch, so you have a little bit more play inside. You're already losing two inch going through the uh, sidewall, so now you're down to that much wire. Now you have two options to uh, hook this up. You can hook up both your uh, hots and your negatives and it will run off your parking lights. I, I don't want that. Uh, so I'm going to disconnect these wires and then I'm going to hook the parking light up to the wires inside here. And then I have the existing wires from my camera in here. I'm going to hook these wires up to the camera wires. So let me get this uh, hole drilled. Don't watch. My eyes are closed. All right, I'm gonna have to put some uh, tape around these to get them through the hole, but first they put uh, heat shrink on both pairs. This is your positive, this is your negative. I'm gonna cut that heat shrink off because um, I'm gonna need all the wire I can get to move around inside. So let me get that cut off. I'll tape them up and shove them through. Okay, I got the wire separated and uh, put back together. That's better. All right, let's see how she lines up. Not too shabby. All right, what, what I'm looking at here, I want the uh, camera to be flush with the uh, trim on the door and then the bottom of the camera to be flush on the top of this uh, trim. Okay, next thing I want to do, I want to pre-drill a hole. And then I am not going to use my impact on this. Just because this is Asdell, and if you uh, strip it out, you're done. Okay, let's straighten her out. Get the next hole drilled. Okay, let me get the last two in. Now they have a piece of foam backing on this, but I'm, I'm still going to run a bead of caulking around here just to seal it up. I won't do that until I am completely done though. Okay, except for uh, caulking, uh, the last things to do is put your uh, lens cover back on and put the antenna on. I put them on, I always put them on that they'll pivot back in case you uh, run, run across the branch or something. Okay, I'm going to get the wires hooked up inside. It's not real easy because right now you only have about that much wire to deal with. It's going to be too tight for the camera. So when I get done here, we, we will pair the camera and we'll check out the uh, monitor. Okay, the camera outside is uh, all hooked up. It's ready to go. So now it's time to check out the monitor. And why are we in here? Well, that's the whole idea of what I liked about this setup. Uh, my, la my last one, the RD7, I had the same thing. I had front, back, and both sides. And uh, the only thing I didn't like about it was the screen was on all the time. This one, you can make the screen go out if you have to. So right now, it's showing nothing. 
we have to pair the other camera. So let's go ahead and pair it. And then pairing. Now I have 50 seconds to run outside and hit the button on that camera. So I will be right back in about two seconds. Okay, apparently we did something wrong, Rebecca. All right, so it's upside down. So we go to settings, we go to mirror, and let's see what that looks like. Does that look better? Yes. Okay. Let me bring up the uh, four cameras and then you can see what uh, each camera is viewing. Okay, so here's one which would be the driver's side. I don't know how well this is coming through. Tap it again. Camera two, which is the one we just installed. Camera three, which is the front camera. And camera four, which is the rear camera. All right, let's go through uh, some of the settings. Okay, we got the mirrored um, all figured out, so they're all right. So to check the settings, you tap the screen the first time, and then your different cameras come up, and then quad view. And then right now I have the rear, driver, and passenger side. And then you can click on either one. Okay, and just like that, I got a haircut, and we're back home. Uh, I didn't like the way the rest of the video turned out, so I wanted to redo it. I missed some of the uh, options in the menu screen. Um, so, And I also wanted to get some footage uh, driving down a road, which I will put that in a video right now. All right, we're going to get a uh, little clip of uh, what it looks like in here. You want to... Okay, I don't know how... I don't know how well you can see the screen, but right now we're on a rear camera. And if we hit it once, we can go to quad mode. And right now we have the rear on top and left and right on the bottom. And you can, okay, we're on the left. You hit it again. We'll go to camera three, which is the front view. Kind of reminds you of uh, Traveling Robert. Yeah, I really like that. We'll hit it again. We'll go to camera four. Yeah, this touch screen is awesome. Okay, as you can see, that works very well. Um, the screen itself is nice and crisp and clear. I know you probably can't tell on the video, but uh, all right, let's get back to Rich and he'll go over the uh, menu settings and uh, we'll wrap this up. Okay, let's uh, go over the settings and I'll give you my likes and my dislikes. Okay, we already went over the camera positions and the screen, so let's go to quad mode. We'll do that real quick and then you can hit on any... Uh, screen you want here let's go to the front okay that's the front view okay now you hit once and then like i said before you get all these up different cameras quad mode and that's where your settings are and then you hit the screen again you have your park line which we don't want park line here but there's your park line double tap park lines off you can also individually do your volume on each screen and then this is to dim your screen um, when it's super bright out it goes black and it's hard to see this icon this is a turn a light on that when it gets dark a light on the camera itself will light um, I'm going to put a picture in now of what it looks like. I tried doing a video, but it didn't turn out. So I'll put that picture in now, and it, it is pretty nice. Okay, let's turn that off. 
That's your record button, which is saying it's recording up here. These icons up here are very hard to see. Um, one, depending on the, your background, background color, and two, the size of the screen. All right, and then scan. We'll get into scan in a second here. Touch it again and again, and brings up your menu. Okay, first one is volume, and now I can hear outside, so we're going to turn that off. All right, let's go back. Uh, pairing, we went over pairing already, and then picture. I haven't done anything to the picture, any adjustments. I mean, the picture is beautiful. And then this is for the camera LED lights. Now the little icon come up here saying that the light is on. So I don't want to do that because I'll forget to turn it off. Okay, next is your mirror. We went over that. And then your quad mode is you can pick any combination of how you want these to come up. And I just have it on uh, this one here, which is uh, back across the top and then driver and passenger okay let's go on we'll skip settings for now scan okay now you can pick any ones you want to scan and also the duration of the time that it is viewing that camera that would be real good inside camper and uh, you can watch outside okay next Okay, there we go. And then your park line. This is where you adjust your park line at. And then however you do it here, whichever camera you put it on, that's how it will be. And then record. Record is on. Uh, I've already formatted the uh, SD card. And then cover, it'll just record over itself once it gets full. And... Oh, Go, go a little faster here and then this is where you do your time and date uh, I had to adjust it um, I think it was set for daylight savings time but uh, it's all good now okay play this is where you get into your menu of all your files that you've uh, recorded um, the bad thing about it is it doesn't give you a date for each one it just gives you a file number so if you're looking for something in particular you might have to go through a lot of uh, folders or files before you find the one you want let's go back and then settings okay trigger uh, trigger there's a green wire attached to your power power wire for the camera that if you put your left or right turn signal on that camera will automatically come up which is a nice option, but I don't want that. Okay, next is your uh, video format. You have NTSC and PAL. NTSC is what is used in North America and some other countries. PAL are for other countries. Settings. Auto dim. I haven't tried it yet. Um, I have it on. We haven't driven at night yet with a camera on, so I really don't know. Okay, now this next option. Let me get it back up here again settings this next option i really like this is lcd sleep so let's set this for five seconds let's go back go back and wait five seconds and your monitor goes to sleep now it is still recording there is a green light on here so that is nice for in a camper Turn that off to leave the screen on. Okay, that's it for the uh, settings. As you can tell, it's uh, pretty easy to navigate through. Uh, pretty easy and self-explanatory. Uh, there's really nothing confusing in it. Um, what I like is, let's see if we get in here. Get us both in. Okay, yeah, what I like is it is just a light touch to get uh, your menu to come up. Okay, now for my likes and dislikes. Uh, my likes, this. Um, this is truly an observation slash security system. 
um, it's recording and I can look out okay right now I'm looking out front right now I can, I can look at my party side if I'm in here I hear something outside I can look here real quick now it's not covering everything but it does a pretty good job uh, my other like is the touch screen the touch screen is awesome as compared to my RD7 trying to hit those buttons and then you look away and it it just the RD7 I didn't care for at all this, I mean, instantly, I mean, I barely tap it and it's, it's coming up. The menu is very easy to uh, navigate. Um, another thing I like too is the compact size. I was worried that it being so small when I had the three cameras up, it was going to be hard to see. That isn't the case at all. Um, it's nice small unit. Uh, there's no sharp edges on it. Oh, yeah, there's no sharp edges or anything. The corners are all rounded on it. Uh, it seems very well made. Uh, the other thing I like is the uh, option to use uh, USB-C to power it. Uh, that makes it a lot nicer. You can just plug it into a USB-A port and uh, charge away. Uh, another nice option it has is uh, it will take up to a 256 gigabyte uh, SD card, which is pretty nice. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of memory on a card. Okay, another thing I like is the LED lights on the camera. Uh, that is great. Uh, I'm lighting up 363 degrees around the camper. And uh, you hear something out there. You can come over, go bam, hit it again. There, the light just come on outside. Yeah, for uh, security, I think that's a very nice option. Okay, now for my dislikes. Uh, there, there's not many, don't worry. Um... My first, my first dislike originally from the get-go was the length of wires on the uh, side marker cam uh, cameras. Uh, they're only six inches, you eight inches, you have two inches of wall, you're down to that much wire. It'd be nice to see uh, anywhere from 20 to 20 inch uh, wire on those cameras. That'll give you a lot more uh, ease of uh, hookup. And my other dislike is a big one. Uh, these cameras are not IR, uh, so in low light conditions, they're mediocre at best. Um, they do have a lo some low light technology to them, but um, it doesn't beat the IR. If I was able to hook up my RD7 cameras to this, I would do that. That's how much better the night vision is on the RD7 cameras. Um, here, I tried it at night. Um, you could see but not very well but that is my biggest dislike okay that's about it for my dislikes um what i'd like to see on it uh one longer wires and uh to the ir cameras and um three if this had the motion detection like the um bt11 has when a car is coming up on you it would make a system a lot better Another thing that would make it nice too is to have motion detection on all of the cameras when you're using it in this configuration. So that you're sitting in your camper, someone walks outside, you get a ding or some type of notification. And that brings me to another thing that would be nice, would be uh, Bluetooth. You can look it up on your phone. You're laying in bed, you hear a ding, you pull your phone up and you can look. But now we're getting into a truly security system, which someday maybe somebody will come out for a camper. Okay, so that's about it. Except for the two uh, dislikes. All in all, this is a fantastic system. Um, I really like adding the front camera onto it uh, for driving, for safety, and for around a camper. I'm going to put a link in the description that you can uh, go on and order this camera or any other Halo View camera. And uh, hopefully this video helps somebody out. And once again, thanks for checking it out. We'll see you all next time. Bye.